Saudi Arabia has been hit by massive flash floods. A night of continuous torrential rainfall has flooded streets in Mecca. The world is, might be coming to an end. Since the first day of 2024, there have been reports of massive earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and tsunamis that have claimed the lives of over 500 people worldwide. And now nature has once again turned on us as the planet is witnessing deadly floods and landslides that threaten to whip off different continents of the map simultaneously. Is this really the end? How much damage have these floods caused? Join us on this thrilling and heartbreaking episode as we reveal how the largest floods ever witnessed are submerging cities all over the globe. Brazil is sinking, just like in the time of Noah in the Bible and the tales of the legendary city of Atlantis. Brazil is facing its own terror. Since April 27, 2024, the country has been battling severe floods that have caused the loss of life and property, landslides, and the destruction of dams. This is the worst flooding in over 80 years and is on its way to becoming the most tragic ever recorded in the nation's history. Caused by heavy rains and storms, the Brazilian National Institute of Meteorology officially reported that the rainfall reached over six inches in parts of Rio Grande do Sul in just 24 hours. Disaster management agencies have announced that at least 83 people have been killed in this state, 291 injured, and 111 reported missing. As if these numbers are not tragic enough, about 121,900 citizens have been displaced from their homes. And because of how unpredictable the disaster was, shelter has only been provided for 19,300 people out of the over 100,000 displaced people. The French news agency Agence France Presse has also reported that the flood triggered a series of explosions, and one of them happened in Porto Alegre where rescue crews were refilling their vehicles. Since the collapse of the 14 de Julo hydroelectric dam in the Das Antas River, it has not only caused a power outage, but also worsened the flood around the municipalities of Cotipora and Bento Goncalves, and 30 people have tragically passed away. It does not look like the damage to infrastructure will be done soon, as there are projections that four other dams across the state are at risk of collapsing too. With over 500,000 people stranded without access to food, clean water, or power, about 345 of the 497 municipalities in Rio Grande have experienced this flood, and frequent landslides that have destroyed roads and bridges have affected Seoul. So as it stands, the people of this state are trapped in it, and the water level is rising quickly. How can the victims be helped? Well, the government and other foreign bodies are trying to find a way as communication via the internet and telephone services was also cut off in about 40 municipalities as the three major services were affected. The status of things in this area can only be speculated on at the moment through word of mouth and aerial surveillance. Boats cannot access the regions either, as the entire cities in the Taquari River Valley, such as Lajado, Estrela, Mucum, Cruzario do Sul, and Arroyo do Mayo are currently inaccessible. The river in Gravitai is at the edge of collapse, and four of the city's treatment plants are out of service. Citizens are praying for mercy because if this menace continues for the rest of the year, the country will be completely off the map. In Porto Alegre, the Guaiba Lake has historically risen by 5.31 meters in the last seven days, beating its record of 4.76 meters that was set by the 1941 floods. Rescue workers are using jet skis, boats and four-wheel vehicles to navigate through the turbulent waters that have covered the street. But 60 streets are completely inaccessible and 10 are partially blocked. Still, the search for stranded and missing people continues. No one knows when all this will end, but for now, 278 schools have been damaged and 36 are used as shelters for the people. What could have caused this tragic fate? Climatologist Francisco Eliso Aquino told the French broadcasting station that the region was prone to extreme climate conditions because of the combination of tropical and polar air masses caused by climate change. This results from global warming and the El Nino climate phenomenon. What does the future hold for Rio Grande do Sul? The governor of the state, Eduardo Leite, said that the disaster is an unpredicted emergency that would go down as the worst the state has ever witnessed. 
The state government has declared a 180 day long state of emergency. On May 5th, the government also approved $21.84 million to help the rescue effort and temporarily curtail the damage caused by the floods. Brazil President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva also visited the unfortunate state on May 2nd and held sympathies with citizens publicly in Santa Maria. He also reassured them that the government was making major moves to help soften the blow. Addressing senior congressional and judicial officials, the president cautioned that the country needed to change its approach to climate-driven disasters as he called for a national plan to prevent climatic accidents and gave very direct instructions to the top environmental lieutenant of the country, Marina Silva, to form a strategy to reduce the damage caused. President Lula called out the global community, emphasizing how Brazil has to pay with blood and land for the mistakes made by other countries. He urged other nations to immediately respond to climate change. With the state covered with three months of rain, it makes the third flooding incident in the same region of the country less likely that the Guaiba River won't drop below three meters, the river's flood limit, before the end of May. It's not just the flood and landslide that's terrorizing the people. The temperature is expected to fall to 50 degrees in the coming days and could increase the risk of hypothermia as the rain permeates. Through aerial surveillance, stranded residents can be seen on their roofs, hoping to be rescued or that the water level drops. A woman in a Porto Alegre suburb came on her social media page and stated how she was scared for herself and her parents, as they are too weak to climb up onto the roof, given that the water level is rising fast. Luckily for her, she and her parents were rescued the next day, but her elderly mother already showed signs of hypothermia. The government has displaced several aircraft, boats, and over 600 soldiers to help clear the roads and distribute food, water, and mattresses to sheltered citizens. Local volunteers have also helped in search efforts. About 1,100 soldiers for all military arms, 2,000 officers from BMRS and firefighters are involved in the whole rescue effort across the states too. Argentina, Venezuela, and Uruguay have also offered help. The Uruguayan government has massively helped by donating a Delphin Bell, 212 helicopter, two drones, and an unspecified number of lifeboats. According to the Brazilian press, American singer Madonna performed a free concert in Copacabana Beach on May 4th to help in the little way she could as part of the celebration tour. And then she quietly donated $1.86 million to aid the victims of the flooding before she left for Rio de Janeiro. How are things in the rest of the world? Is Brazil the only country facing the daring consequences of industrialization? Massive floods in Asia. Over 100 people have been confirmed dead across Asia this month due to intense flooding across the continent in the past month. Countries like India, China, and Japan have experienced heavy rainfall accompanied by landslides, and hundreds of thousands of people have been forced to evacuate as a result. Last Friday, the South Korean government placed the country on high alert as experts predicted that a very strong storm would hit the nation's capital city, Seoul. In the Philippines, it was more frightening as officials warned about a tropical cyclone. The suspense didn't just stop there. Japan had severe floods on Kyushu Island and at least eight people, including a local politician, have been confirmed dead and others are still missing. The rainfall was unusually heavy, with Japan's meteorological agency calling it unprecedented. Experts say that the present climate change is making floods more common globally. Many countries are struggling to deal with extreme weather and many countries will soon join in the struggle. Even though Japan has long prepared for natural disasters of this kind, it still witnessed record rainfall, floods, and landslides. If it were to be a less wealthy country that often lacks warnings and flood protection, the impact would have been deadlier. A bit over 420,000 citizens have been evacuated from two prefectures on Kyushu Island. In Seoul, South Korea, 135 people were evacuated due to heavy rain, causing power cuts in 4,000 households. South Korea's Prime Minister Han duk Su emphasized in a meeting with government agencies that saving lives was the country's top priority during the ongoing monsoon season and that all public officials must stay vigilant and continue to act until the flood ends. The Prime Minister also cautioned officials to be fully prepared for potential disasters 
as the flood is about to get worse. There are reports that North Korea will release water from a dam near the inter-Korean border because of the heavy rainfall in that region. They have previously done it in the past, and this has caused flooding and deaths in South Korea. China and India have also experienced several weeks of heavy rainfall, resulting in significant damage in different regions. In northern India alone, nearly 100 people have died in the last two weeks due to landslides, flash floods, and building collapses. In Delhi, parts of the subway system have closed due to flooding, adding more strain to the already flooded roads in the city with the second highest population in India. Photos and videos online show people stuck on flooded streets and wading through waist-high water. Unusually heavy rains in China have caused deaths in damaged buildings. Last week in southwestern Chongqing, a building collapsed into a river amid strong currents. Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh, also had flash floods after having the heaviest rainfall in three years. About 14 districts in the city were affected. In Afghanistan, devastating floods took the lives of 66 people and left 36 injured across 23 provinces. Over 1,200 houses were destroyed or damaged, affecting more than 1,200 families. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Afghanistan reported significant damage with nearly 1,000 houses impacted. Many lost their lives due to roofs collapsing and 200 livestock perished. The floods also submerged about 600 kilometers of roads and 800 hectares of farmland. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa was hit the hardest, with 46 lives lost. Torrential rains triggered floods and power outages in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Balochistan, Punjab, and Azad Jammu in Kashmir. Most fatalities were caused by lightning strikes during wheat harvesting, and others resulted from homes collapsing under heavy rainfall. Streets in several cities, including Islamabad, were inundated. Balochistan declared a state of emergency due to the severity of the situation. Pakistan's National Disaster Management Authority has issued a warning to emergency services to stay alert, as more heavy rains are expected. The NDMA reported heartbreaking numbers, 25 children, 12 men and 9 women lost their lives, with 11 women, 33 men, and 16 children injured due to the floods. As a result of the ongoing flooding, the Grand Prix of Kazakhstan, scheduled for May 3rd, was postponed to a later date in the season. The Kazakhstan Ministry of Emergency Situations reported that they had to evacuate over 96,000 people, including more than 31,000 children, from affected areas like Oktobe, Petropavlovsk, and regions such as Atirau, Oktobe, Akmola, Kostanai, East Kazakhstan, Northern Kazakhstan, and Pavlodar. The flooding has been horrifying in neighboring Orenburg, Tomsk, Tumen, and Kurgan Oblast, which share borders with Kazakhstan because of the collapse of a dam near Orsk on April 5th. Major rivers like the Ural River, flowing through Russia and Kazakhstan into the Caspian Sea, and the Tobol and Ashim rivers experience significant rises in water levels. Authorities in Tyumen Oblast warned that flooding along the Tobol River would reach its peak in May, adding to the challenges faced by communities in the affected regions. This series of events has created a complex and challenging situation for residents and emergency responders alike. Once the flooding began, it wasn't just the Orsk Dam that faced trouble. Other dams in the area couldn't hold up against the heavy rains and rising water levels. One dam in Novotroitsk, Orenburg Oblast, and another along the Tom River near Tomsk gave way under pressure. In Russia, the government hasn't officially confirmed any deaths from the floods. However, on April 17th, a report from the investigative news outlet, Histories, revealed that seven people had tragically lost their lives in Orenburg Oblast due to the floods. Families of the victims accused authorities of hiding the true circumstances of these deaths to avoid compensating them fairly. Then on April 22nd, another report from the investigative news outlet Agensvo raised concerns about radioactive contamination in the Tobol River. This came after the Dobrovolnoye uranium mines, operated by Rosatom in Zvernogolovsky district, Kurgan Oblast, were flooded during the disaster. These developments added further complexities and worries to the ongoing challenges faced by the communities in these flood-stricken regions. The South American and Asian countries are not alone in this fight. The underdeveloped countries on other continents are facing the same fate. Terror awaits Africa, 
The Eastern Africa region has been facing severe challenges due to El Nino-driven heavy rains and flooding during the long rainy season from March to May. Countries like Burundi, Kenya, Somalia, Rwanda, Tanzania, and others have been hit hard with torrential rains and floods causing loss of lives, displacement, and widespread destruction. In Kenya alone, nearly 205,000 people have been affected by the heavy rains and flooding, while in Burundi, the number stands at 179,000. Somalia has seen around 127,000 people impacted, and Tanzania has reported over 125,670 affected individuals. Many have been forced to leave their homes, with 194,305 people displaced in Kenya, 31,200 in Burundi, and 8,376 in Somalia. The floods have taken a toll on communities, particularly in Nyanza and Burera districts in Rwanda, where casualties have been reported. Infrastructure like houses, schools, and crops has been damaged or destroyed. Access to clean water and sanitation has become challenging, increasing the risk of diseases such as cholera. Additionally, the region is now preparing for the potential impact of Cyclone Hidaya, which is expected to affect coastal areas of Kenya and Tanzania. This ongoing crisis highlights the urgent need for humanitarian assistance and support to address the immediate and long-term impacts of the floods on vulnerable populations in Eastern Africa. In response to the devastating floods in Eastern Africa, governments and humanitarian partners are working together to conduct search and rescue operations and provide life-saving assistance to those affected. Burundi's flood response plan is being finalized to assist 306,000 vulnerable people around Lake Tanganyika, with targeted funding of $25.3 million. So far, 2,500 people have received immediate assistance and efforts are underway to pre-position supplies for further response. Kenya's vital support has been provided to nearly 127,000 affected individuals, with over 120 displacement sites set up to accommodate those displaced by the floods. Meanwhile, Somalia's humanitarian coordinator launched a $3 million Somalia humanitarian fund to prepare for the impact of the goo rains and flooding, with supplies prepositioned in 22 districts to aid 770,000 people at risk of flooding. In Tanzania, response teams have been deployed to conduct search and rescue operations and deliver life-saving aid in Rafiji and Kibiti districts, providing assistance to over 2,880 people across five camps. Reaching areas affected by flooding in East Africa remains a challenge due to road closures and the limited access caused by the floods themselves. Persistent heavy rains are also making it difficult to reach people who need assistance. Limited resources further complicate partners' efforts to respond effectively to the scale of the crisis. In West Africa, Nigeria, Professor Joseph Utsav, the Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, has issued a warning about potential flood risks in 148 local government areas across 31 states in 2024. This caution was part of the official unveiling of the 2024 annual flood outlook in Abuja, focusing on promoting the use of data analytics and modeling for flood risk assessments and food security. The Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency leads the yearly AFO predictions, identifying states at risk including Adamawa, Akwa Ibom, Anambra, Bauchi, Bielsa, Benue, Borno, Cross River, Delta, Iboni, Edo, Amo, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, Kogi, Kwara, Lagos, Nasarawa, Niger, Ogun, Ondo, Osun, Oyo, Plateau, Rivers, Sokoto, Taraba, and Yobe. Professor Utsev pointed out that the flood risk outlook aligns with the presidential agenda on food security, which is crucial to the administration's goal of lifting millions of Nigerians out of poverty and promoting national prosperity. To address flood challenges, President Bola Tinubu initiated the National Economic Council Ad Hoc Committee on Flood Mitigation, Adaptation, Preparedness, and Response. This committee aims to develop a comprehensive plan to enhance Nigeria's flood mitigation, preparedness, adaptation, and communication infrastructure. Even as African countries are investing time and resources to help control future flooding, to what extent does this guarantee their safety? To get more insight, let's delve into the continent that has invested the most in managing floods, Europe under SAGE. 
In recent weeks, heavy rains have pounded Germany, France, and the Netherlands, causing widespread flooding and even resulting in one death in France. Northern towns in France found themselves submerged underwater, leading to the evacuation of hundreds of people. The region had already experienced flooding in November and December, and some areas had yet to fully recover from previous disasters. Central England has also been affected by significant flooding, with more heavy rain expected in the southern regions. As of Thursday evening, over 220 flood warnings and nearly 300 flood alerts remained active across the country. This flooding follows closely on the heels of Storm Hank, which battered large parts of England and Wales, saturating the ground and increasing the risk of further flooding. What's causing all this extreme weather? According to meteorologist Fabian Runau, Europe's heavy rainfall is influenced by a western weather pattern, where the North Atlantic jet stream flows directly into Central Europe, bringing along low-pressure systems and abundant rainfall. While this weather pattern isn't unusual in itself, climate change is exacerbating the situation, making extreme rainfall events more frequent and severe. This underscores the urgent need for climate action to mitigate the impact of these weather extremes on communities across Europe. In northern France, heavy rainfall and rising sea levels are causing significant challenges for low-lying communities. Above average ocean temperatures, partly influenced by the El Nino weather pattern, lead to increased evaporation, resulting in more rain in these regions. Additionally, rising sea levels over the years have made rivers more prone to overflowing, exacerbating the flooding situation. Recent days have seen power outages, flooded streets, and evacuations in northern France due to these weather impacts. Sea levels have risen by 9 centimeters in Dunkirk from 1957 to 2017 and by 4.4 centimeters in Calais from 1966 to 2018, contributing to the flooding woes. Outdated water management systems in northern France are struggling to cope with the dual threats of extreme weather and climate change. Building developments along riverbanks have further hindered drainage capabilities and repeated storms have left the soil saturated and unable to absorb more water. To combat the flooding, pumps have been deployed from across France and the neighboring Netherlands to help drain the excess water. Mark Harbors, the infrastructure and water minister, emphasized the importance of collaborative efforts to manage the water effectively. He highlighted the need to swiftly remove excess water to prevent further damage and ensure the safety of affected communities. In the UK, communities are facing the consequences of neglected infrastructure projects. Damaged flood defenses, mismanaged rivers, and poor soil quality are worsening the impact of heavy rainfall. As the planet warms, rainfall is increasing. For every one degree Celsius of warming, experts say the atmosphere can hold 7% more water vapor. This heightened moisture content increases the likelihood of heavy rainfall and intense downpours. Analyses suggest that storms are becoming more frequent and intense, leading to heavier rainfalls and more significant flooding events. With human activities continuing to release heat-trapping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, Europe will need to invest in improved flood defenses, early warning systems, and resilience measures to cope with the aftermath of heavy rain and other extreme weather events. This proactive approach is crucial for protecting communities and minimizing the impact of climate change-related challenges across the continent. These recent catastrophic floods have not spared any part of the globe. In fact, even the desert has not been spared. Anomalies in the Holy City. Online videos showed pilgrims circling the Kaaba, getting soaked and slipping on the wet floor due to the intense rain. Additionally, footage captured a lightning bolt striking the Fairmont Maka Clock Royal Tower Hotel. According to Hussein al Qatani, spokesperson for the National Center for Meteorology, the storm brought strong winds exceeding 80 kilometers per hour. The Mecca neighborhood of al Kakiya received 45 millimeters of rain within 24 hours. Some areas in Mecca experienced mild flooding, leading residents to seek shelter and halt their activities. However, authorities reported no significant incidents or casualties from the recent storms. And while flash flooding has diminished, further storms are anticipated on Wednesday, posing potential risks to the Mecca region and other parts of Western Saudi Arabia. Also in Jeddah, the second largest city located on the Red Sea coast, 
Two individuals lost their lives when they became trapped in their submerged vehicle as the city got flooded, as confirmed by civil defense spokesman Colonel Mohammed Al Karni. Slow moving thunderstorms were identified as the cause of the flooding in Jetsa, with an astounding seven inches of rain falling in the city over six hours. The King Abdulaziz International Airport reported 3.39 inches of rain through midday, causing flight delays. What caused the flood? Lately, Saudi Arabia has been having some strange weather patterns that people are discussing. For example, there have been reports of snowfall in the Northwest, which is unusual. These events have made people consider how global climate change might affect Saudi Arabia's weather. Another reason why flooding happens more often in Saudi Arabia is because cities and buildings are growing fast. When cities get bigger, they replace natural areas with hard surfaces like roads, buildings, and parking lots. This makes it hard for rainwater to soak into the ground, so it just runs over the land. This extra water overwhelms the drainage systems and natural rivers, especially when it's raining a lot. Sometimes cities are built where floods can easily happen, making the risk even higher when it rains. Also, how cities are planned and built can add to the flooding problem. And because of human-made climate change, the usual patterns of how much rain falls and when change. Rainstorms can be much stronger and less predictable, making flooding more likely. The Mecca regional government announced on the X platform that certain parts of Mecca would have school closures on Wednesday and classes would be conducted through online learning for everyone's safety. The Jeddah Civil Defense deployed swimmers to rescue motorists stranded in vehicles, and the Maka Region Task Force utilized 52 water tanks and over 100 excavating machines to address the flooding. To tackle these weather challenges, the Saudi authorities would include green spaces in city planning to counter the problems caused by dry conditions. Coastal areas with milder weather would serve as a model to manage the extreme weather inside the country. Early warning systems designed for sandstorms and occasional heavy rain are crucial for handling the weather. These plans are not just meant to tackle the ongoing flood. They are to be implemented for future occurrences. The Saudi government aims to balance development goals with protecting the environment. What do you think about these floods? Do you think they will be ending anytime soon? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more interesting videos. Thank you for watching.